Hi everyone, this is Arpad from the YouTube channel Starpath Academy and I'm doing my post-Soviet podcast series episode 2. In each episode I'm trying to answer a question posted by a member and um, let's see where this goes. <laughs> uh, today is about the question that asks uh, how did you deal with winters? Very good question by the way. So after the fall of Soviet Union in Romania, many people moved out from the cities into their um, rel uh, relatives houses around the cities, smaller towns where they actually had some land that they could work on. And if nothing else, we worked the land with our bare hands to make it produce food to survive. And the winters were harsh and depending on the year depending on the situation of that year it might be easier or harder to survive the winters either on the small town or in the big cities so that really depended so there were two different strategies in the big cities um, let's just start with that um, maybe some people didn't have relatives or they can move in and out right and they just suffered through this period in the big cities so in there um, basically at least in our case in Transylvania and Romania we had pretty good uh, sustainability for natural gas we have natural gas reserves there and that was used and was um, well not cheap but at least we could somewhat afford it or you had to afford it maybe you couldn't afford electricity and water was um, iffy but uh, we had gas and if we didn't have gas then we would try um, to acquire gas maybe if the through the pipeline we didn't have it then we would have in these gas tanks so at least with gas and that's natural gas right um, propane and or propane right um, it's a bit different but it's very similar you could store it for indefinitely in these tanks and that's the beauty of it so if you live in a place where you could do that that's really good and sustainable now you have to look out for what's sustainable in your area right so i'm i keep saying natural gas and that sort of stuff was pretty good for us and it was really good for the cities i mean it was pretty much our only option back then for the city and um right well um, we did eventually have the gas line uh, connected to the homestead as well but we actually didn't have that connected uh, during communism but later on we did and it was quite pricey but it was sort of worth it because um, later on wood uh, was becoming less and less um, affordable basically and it was kind of hard to get and um, a lot of people traded it but the price was pretty much there so it was just easier to go sometimes in some winters with natural gas but that's our environment you have to look out where you are right where in the us are you and what could you use um, it could be heating oil it could be just burning logs it could be you know um, wood pellets whatever you can burn right or come up with your own situations but pretty much relying only on electricity would be dangerous in my opinion so you have to come up with something else right um and now i have of course um an, another so i used to have one gas tank i have two now um, i always keep one full um for the winter and kind of treat it as if it wouldn't even be there as as a backup because i never know what could be happening and also i have uh these uh some of these smaller gas tanks that um you could uh, put it in your truck and have it filled up with um one of these places um like u-haul or something like that right so that is quite important to have those as well um now of course again depending on where you live what's your situation you want to make sure that everything is safe but uh, you want to look into that so i believe in um in that and uh, having more and of course you have to know eventually you'll have you'll you would run out of that or the price of that would be very high 
or it would be uh, capped, right? Or you could only have so much. And basically I'm saying that try to exhaust what the options are that the system is providing you um, in these situations and try to fit into the situation with your neighbors and uh, fit in with the rest of um, and with the rest of the town so you don't stand out that you have uh, too much energy uh, that could be a liability right uh, but you want to have that option and also kind of fit in with the current system whatever is being used by others as well but you want to have some backup or maybe have um, be um, able to trade energy right so that's very very important as well um, now what we did was um, let's say in the cities um, we made uh, a room um, which is mostly connected to mostly basically the kitchen plus another room or a kitchen and another living area that we try to seal off as much as possible so th in this way we could um, close a couple of doors um, in, in an apartment and not use uh, as as many rooms as possible that you can get away with not using not use those and seal off uh, the windows uh, for those uh, rooms and shut the door or do whatever you have to do and i have to watch out for mold and that sort of stuff if you have humidity but you want to uh, you want to make a room and the kitchen where um where most of the family can hang out basically uh, and especially night time was uh, more dangerous, right? Uh, because of the cold and all the rest. So, uh, we would have, um, we would have, um, like you would be cooking something on the gas stove that we had, but um, also in the kitchen, we would be drying our wet socks uh, that we, uh, we had in the winter, of course. And um, that was also for heating. So making that enclosed area as much as possible as you can. Um, you know keeping the heat but it's also can be dangerous now with uh, natural gas not so much but if you're definitely if you're using logs or some other heating mechanisms then you have to watch out for um, um well first even even with um gas you have to watch out for burning up to too much oxygen if you're it's a very very small room but you have to watch out for carbon monoxide especially for um, burning logs and that sort of stuff so it can be dangerous um when uh, we were in the homestead we actually put two beds in the kitchen so we had two beds in the kitchen and um another room that was close to the kitchen uh, there we had three beds right and uh, in each bed we multiple people slept so we kept warm that way as well and that means that when you when you so actually in the in the homestead that was made out of um mud bricks and uh, it was pretty good keeping the heat in and during winter uh, during the winter times and during the cold uh during the summer times it was pretty good act actually uh, having a cool, cooler temperature in the house now with um, houses made out of sticks or <laughs> that sort of stuff it's, it won't work that well but what we did was we um, we did have we did open the windows especially in morning time and that sort of stuff before we went out uh, uh, the, of the house and did our um, daily routines and all the chores that we have to do but especially um, to, towards the afternoon we would start um, you know preparing the food and use the same heat to uh, heat the house right and um, you would we would make teas especially and you know you know the drill <laughs> bread with lard and the mint tea was pretty much the routine <laughs> for um, for dinner so uh, we would use the heat that was generated from that um as much as possible and it would keep us and then we would actually close um basically turn off turn off the stove uh the wood stove or turn off the gas stove we had a stove we had a stove that worked which was a metal stove that worked both with one side worked with gas and the other side would would work with wooden logs so based on the situation we would use one or the other and then uh, we would turn it off or let the fire go out and then we would use that heat and plus our body heat 
and um, in the beds we wore mittens and um, basically we were <laughs> pretty much um, clothes on <laughs> so uh, we that's how we would survive the colder colder times right so that was I mean that was an experience but it was also kind of life and it was fun <laughs> and they, you would sleep in pairs or three people in the bed and usually it was you know someone younger with parents in a bed or something like that and multiple families in the kitchen yeah so that's what we did um for winter i mean there's some other tips that you can use i mean you could use electric heating units if you have but all of these are you mean you have to watch out for dangers and uh, read the labels and how to use it um heating oil and that sort of stuff of course um yeah you, you but again you have to watch out where do you live what is uh, a good solution for that area because it could be very different from um what you think it is or what i'm saying it is for you so but basically making sure that the home is energy efficient is going to be very important and not, and not for the green stuff i mean you'll go green because um well except burning the logs i guess you'll go green because um the price of energy might be that high that you have no other option right so that um uh, that is something to think about um and also for winter and summer we had actually two kitchens one was the so the one was the inner kitchen and the one i was talking about but for the summer we had another wood stove that again worked with gas and logs and that was the summer kitchen so we wanted the exact opposite on the summer time we we had the colder house right we didn't have any air conditioning or even sometimes electricity but um you know that house was pretty good um because of the mud bricks and it was always kind of colder and uh, especially if you have some trees around it or that sort of stuff that really helps and then we would cook our food on the outside so on the outside of the house in another um region which actually wasn't uh, walled off completely that was the summer kitchen and that's where we would prepare food during the summertime right um now what else can i to say well i guess i should uh, talk about products and some other stuff that you could use but now you kind of watch out for a lot of these um uh, product reviews and that sort of stuff for prepping i mean most of the stuff that I have seen are short-term solutions where, um, okay, if you're out in the woods or something like that, use this and you can burn that for X amount of hours or whatever. But I mean, for long-term survival, you have to think about longer, bigger solutions, right? And um, it, it, it is all based on your environment you have to work with your environment now we haven't really had to do this but um my aunt did and even the stories that i've heard um like in prior times at uh, the early start of communism or end of second world war where basically they ran out of everything at the uh, the the, the um, trees basically the uh, forests were taken away by the communists uh, I mean my parents my grandparents did have to and my aunt did have to um, um, be in the barn at some point with the animals right and use their heat and uh, the heat of everyone to kind of survive the colder winters uh, this is a bit extreme extreme but you know if um, if you're a farmer and that you know comes uh, that could work as well of course but you have to watch out how windy the barn is and that sort of stuff so again it's all making sure that you work with your um your parameters and what you have at hand uh, regarding products of course making sure that you have a good sets of clothes um put aside for these types of situation you might actually have to be sleeping in them or whatever but making sure you have a fleece and you have thermo insulated blankets as well um put away 
um, just in case something happens. I mean, it doesn't have to be end of the world situation or scenario. You come home one time and your AC is not working and it's super cold and you maybe don't have gas. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, a lot of maybes there. Hopefully you never get there and you have backups, but uh, things are good to have. And especially if you're in, in your car, it's good to have some thermal insulated blankets, right? And in your house, if you have select electricity, and um, you are not able to pay the bill for a full uh, heating of the house. Um, maybe uh, just um, an electric uh, heating pad or something like that that you put in your bed, right? Especially if you have small, small children, uh, that could be, you know, a game changer. So again, you don't want to overspend on things that not have a link, uh, of course, in the description for uh, what something you could use but you don't want to um kind of over spend your money on this stuff um because these are kind of extremes um uh, one other thing that you could uh, be looking into i know milwaukee um it's a brand i have the the drills and all that all of that stuff uh they have well actually multiple ones now but that's the one that i have uh, they uh, sell jackets that um, have uh, heating pads inside the jacket, right? And it actually works with um, these uh, the same uh, battery packs that you can use your drills with. So I'm pretty sure sure uh, the other brands have it as well. Now, of course, again, as long as you have some type of um, solar panel or something like that going on where you can generate electricity and then using it sparingly right um you could uh, use that in very dire situations if you have to work outside in the cold um yeah there's a lot of good products there but again you want to make sure you spend your money wisely because every dollar you spend on something like this it might not be going somewhere else where you might actually need it more so um yeah don't overspend but if if you're i mean if you're living in very cold climates uh, you should already have this um you should already have this working for you hopefully all right uh, if you have very more uh questions that are very specific um on some of these products or um how we did what then feel free to ask me in the comment section or if you're a member on uh, Buy Me a Coffee or Patreon, then you can ask questions directly. So thank you very much um, and um, feel, feel free to like and share the video, uh, more coming your way and um, yeah, um, see you next time.